y'all. Welcome to Willow Tree Woodworking. So, holidays are coming up and I thought, hmm, what is it that I can actually do that's a little bit different this year than I do every other year? So, I jumped on YouTube and I started looking for some ideas. Well, guess what? I got myself the X-Tool D1 10 watt laser. Seems though that the big craze right now is for everybody to do laser engraved canvas. And I've gotten some really good results and a lot of people have asked me, how do you actually achieve that? As you can see, I love horses. I grew up with horses since I was a little kid. And so what do I like to engrave? I like to engrave horses. So how do you take this blank canvas and turn it into this beautiful piece of art? Well, if you're interested in learning how to do that, stick around. I'm gonna show you how I process my canvas. I'm gonna pull it into GIMP. I'm gonna run the plugin that GIMP has. Really simple and really easy. Export it out, pull it into Lightburn, set it up in Lightburn and run this canvas and let you guys see how well this turns out. All right, so we're out here in the shop. We're getting ready to uh, prepare our canvas. So as you can see, these are the canvases that I use. I pick them up at Michael's. I get like a six pack. They have a variety of them out there. I think I pay about $12.99 for six of these canvases. Now the paint that I use, I use black and I use white. Sometimes I use a variety of different colors, but pretty much standard. Most people just want to start off with black and white. These are easily picked up at Home Depot or any pretty much any hardware store that's around you. Everybody seems to sell these. They're relatively inexpensive and they seem to work out really, really well. All right, so here we are with my white canvas and I'm gonna start off with uh, doing my first layer in the white. And I always like to start off with the white. Some people don't do it, some people do. I find that I get the best results by uh, spraying my canvas first with, with the high gloss white. So I also highly suggest that you pick yourself up one of these. I think they're probably around five bucks at Home Depot or something like that. This actually will help you to easily spray your canvas a lot better than just trying to do it by hand. I mean, you can certainly do it by hand, but you're gonna get probably better results by using one of these little sprayers. And they're really effective and really cheap. All right, so we're gonna do this in two different stages. So the first stage is we're gonna go back and forth like this. Then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do our second coat like this. So easily just spray it on. Make sure that you're doing nice even strokes. Then we're gonna turn this a little bit. And we're gonna go the opposite direction. And now, this doesn't have to be perfect, because this is just kind of a base layer, but you do want to make sure that you're getting the entire canvas covered here. And that's it for our first coat. We'll let that dry for about 30 minutes and we'll come back and we'll put on the black. All right, so we've let our canvas dry for about 30 minutes. You just want to go in and you want to make sure that you touch it and make sure that it's not tacky before you put on your next coat just depending on the temperature of where you're at. <clears throat> Sometimes it may take longer, may take less time if it's on a hot day. So we're gonna follow the same process. We're gonna do the two-step application of our black paint now. So I'm gonna start here at the top. I'm gonna put on my first layer this way, making sure that I get everything nicely covered. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do it the opposite direction. And that's it. That's how easy it is to prepare your canvas. Now, I do highly suggest that you let this dry overnight. If you try and burn this on a diode laser <clears throat> or even on a CO2 laser, and you try and do it too soon and your paint's still wet, you're essentially just gonna gum up your lens and you're not gonna get a re good result. So make sure that you let this dry appropriately before you try and do your uh, laser engrave.
So now that we have our canvas prepped and it's out there in the shop drying, uh, we're going to start to prepare our image for engraving. So there's a couple different options that I like to use. Uh, the first one is a free option. Uh, this is a website called Imager, and it allows you to actually prep your canvas or prep your image for laser engraving. Um, so essentially you go in here and you click on upload and you go find the file that you want or the image that you want. Open it up. And it's going to go process it for you. So you have a couple different options down here at the bottom. Uh, you can do a crop, you can do a resize, you can add text, uh, you can choose your material, and then you download. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go crop our image. And you can see that it pulls it up in a fairly big window here. And you can switch your measurement either to pixels, inches, millimeters, whatever you choose. Um, I always typically go with a square crop uh, just because I like how it's going to set it up. So I'm just doing a square crop here. That's pretty much what I want to see. Click on crop and it'll go crop your image for you. Next, we're going to select the material. And because we're doing this on the Xtool D1, uh, we're going to select Norton. Uh, that's primarily what people use for doing diode. And we're going to select Norton white tile. So this is the standard method when you're doing it either on any kind of white tile that's painted or if you want to do it on canvas. So it's the same process. Click OK. And now it's going to give you some options over here. It's going to let you go in and make changes to it. Uh, you can set your contrast, your brightness, your sharpness. I don't really mess with anything on here. Um, I, I just kind of leave it as is. I select you know, what, what I actually want to do from my materials list. And then I go download. And you can save it as a BN, BMP. You can save it as PNG or JPEG. So I'm going to download this as a JPEG. And you're going to get this pop-up uh, because this is free. Uh, it's going to pop you up and ask you, you know, it's going to show you some ads. So you just click out of that and your image will start to download. The other option that I use is a plugin used in GIMP. So GIMP itself is actually a free application that you can use. Uh, but the plugin that I use is not free. As you can see, it's 60 bucks. So that could be pretty expensive for most people. I would suggest that if you're not doing, you know, a bunch of canvases and this is not a small business for you and you're just doing one or two just for your own personal use go use imager use that as your free your, you know your free process and when you are finished with your image always click restart because what that does is it removes your image from their platform um, and it just kind of restarts everything for you resets everything for you so if you wanted to do another image you can actually just click on restart it'll go and it'll start you right from the beginning again and you just go into upload and follow the same process. So now the plugin, <clears throat> this uh, is version four right now. It is $60. You can go download GIMP. And here's the GIMP platform. You can see it's a free open source image editor. Um, it's a really good editor. You can do a lot of different things in here. Uh, it doesn't cost you money like Photoshop or Illustrator or anything like that. Um, and there are quite a few plugins that you can pull into GIMP to do different kinds of things. So I highly rec recommend going out and using GIMP. It works both on Mac and PC. So once you get GIMP and you get the plugin, we're going to go into GIMP itself. And this is what GIMP looks like. This is what the window looks like when you open it up. And you can see I already have over here my Spanish horse that I downloaded. I'm just going to pull it in here, drop it in a GIMP. Now you'll see up here at the top, I have the plugin already installed. Uh, so once you download that plugin, uh, you'll get instructions on how to actually add it to GIMP. So I just select it and I'm going to run it. And it's going to ask me a few questions. It's going to say, you know, select the material on lens size. I'm going to select version four tile and I'm going to do a two inch lens. I'm going to set my DPI and I usually set this pretty high, even though we're doing it on the diode and we're only going to probably do about 320 DPI. When I process the image, I actually do a 600 DPI. I'm going to set my width to 360 by 360 because I'm going to do a 14 by 14 canvas. Click OK. 
And you can see it's just going to run through and it's going to set everything for you. Nothing else needs to be done. Once it finishes, it'll show you your image. And you can see that it's pretty high scale. So just go up here to view, come down here to zoom, and select the zoom that you want. And now you can see that our image is processed. So our next step is just to export this out. So I'm going to click on export as. I'm going to save it to my desktop. Uh, it's called Spanish Horse. And I usually just add a hyphen G-M-P, G-I-M-P, D, just so that I know that this is, image has already been processed. I don't change it from JPEG. You can change it if you want. You can go down here into the select file type. If you want to do PNG, BMP, GIF, whatever you choose, I always find just leaving it as is works just fine for me. So I'm going to export that out. It's going to ask me again what quality I want. Give me a few different options. Make sure that you set this quality to 100%. And if it's not already set to 100%, set it and click Save Defaults. Click on Export. Now we're going to go into Lightburn. Here we are in Lightburn. We're going to pull in our image. So you can see down here, this is where I have my image now. I'm just going to drop it in here. And you can see it's pretty big. So because I want to do a 14 by 14, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide this guy. I'm going to go select the square tool. Just create a quick square. Do your unlock over here. Set it to 14 by 14. And lock it down. Next, I'm going to unhide my image. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to hit Control, and I'm going to click the square right behind it, right mouse click, and say Apply Mask to Image. And what that's going to do is put this image behind that square box. So this allows me now to go in and move my graphic around so that I can align it. So you just kind of click on it, <clears throat> drag your corners out. I'm going to select all by doing control A. I'm just going to kind of move it to the center of my screen here so that I can see what I'm doing. And you can also use these tools up at the top. You can align vertically center and you can align horizontal center. And you can see it kind of pushes my image right where I want it. You still have the option to go in here and make some adjustments and change whatever it is that you like on here. Now, another option, if you just click the image itself and you right click on it, you can go down here and you can adjust the image right here in Lightburn. I don't make any changes to this. I leave it as is because I've already processed it either through GIMP or I processed it through ImageR. So click OK, get out of that. Now we're going to right click again because I have my image exactly where I want it. And I'm going to select everything. So do Control A again. And I'm going to do flatten image to mask. And what that's going to do is it's going to make a single layer for me just of my image itself. So the next step for us is to go in and set the parameters on our image. So we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call this Spanish horse. And I'm going to set my speed to 6,000. I have found that 6,000 works the best for me. You can play around with this with the speed itself. And you'll notice this is millimeters a minute, not a second. I'm going to set my power to 65%. And you can also play around with the power itself. Uh, the higher power you go, you're going to actually burn off more of the paint. The less power you go, the less paint you're going to burn off. I found somewhere between 65 and 75 works great. Um, if you're doing multi-layer or multi-color canvases, then you're going to want to set this to like somewhere between 60 and 65 because you really want to pull out those colors. I don't want constant power. I'm not choosing negative in image. I do want bi-directional scanning. I'm going to set my overscan to 5, and I'm going to set my DPI over here to 320. 
So you notice that's a difference from what we actually did when we processed it, where we set it to 600. In uh, Lightburn, because we're going to be doing this on the Xtool D1, I, I primarily always stick with about 320 dpi. That seems to work the best for me. Now the scan angle, this is subjective. Uh, some people like to use zero, some people set it at 22 degrees, some people set it at 45 degrees. This is essentially something that you can go in and play around with. Uh, that's exactly why I created the other video that shows you how to go in and set these parameters, do a couple different test burns, see what you like, and then when you're ready uh, to go in and do a full burn like this, you know exactly what setting works best for you. So I typically set mine to either 45 or I set it to zero. I'm not changing any other option here. I'm going to pick Jarvis. I'm leaving pass through the way step for us. We're going to go in and we're going to preview this. And I want to see how long it's actually going to take to burn. So if I click on invert, you can see the difference in my image here. And you pretty much have to kind of zoom right in to see how that image is going to look. And a 14 by 14 canvas is going to take roughly about five hours. Now, I have noticed with light burn that it is typically 30 to 45 minutes off of what the time it is that it says. So I would anticipate somewhere between six plus hours to do a 14 by 14 canvas. And you can always change the size. I mean, you can once you have your image in there and you have it processed, you can set it to whatever size you want. Come back in here and, you know, see how long it's going to take and decide what size that you want to do. So I'm going to click OK, and that's it. I'm ready to go set up my laser and put my canvas on there and start burning.